nothing but ambulances for the last like week. That's pretty fire. Mmm. Yeah. Racing pants. Nice, dude. I want to see what these are like. My hat is ruining my fit. Fucking helmet. <laughs> should have gotten the red. Should have gotten that red kit hat with the drum. I don't know how you wear this. Fashionably <laughs> wrong. Yeah. Okay. Yo, what's up, ladies? Yeah, do you need a chain? This came from the race. Need a trophy. Yeah. Pants are hella comfortable. Crazy. It'll work out for me. There you go. Oh, great. Well, we're excited. We're excited to get you involved. Press the button and dab directly from the concentrate container. Oh, so like a neck collector. Exactly. Same device. You can unscrew this atomizer and add this one on. Okay. It allows you to pack up your concentrate. You replace glass. You still get your water experience. It's with that same vapor tip. Okay. But with, uh, you know, Universal yeah. adapter. Fits any cartridge, anyone that's out there on the market. It goes up in the adapter. Full zipper around your hood, and then you vape by the other side. Say the Pax Era, we made an adapter for the Pax Era. Fits up jewel. in, and the jewel, yeah, the nicotine jewel. And a Total. spot for your beer when you plan. Exactly. A little koozie. <laughs> nice. You know what? The, va the vape guys are approaching you because you look like one of them. <laughs> yeah, you look like you, no. like, you look like you belong. Oh, for real? There's signs that tell you what the deal is, I'm saying. I don't think anything said no smoking. I'm sure that you can, but what I understand is normally with these products, they're like giving out dabs and shit. Yep. So can you actually No. No. Oh, I just moved, dude. Unfortunately not. Okay. No, and there's like undercovers and shit, and then I possibly give tickets and whatever, so. They said there could be undercovers left around. Really? Yeah. That's weird. I'm out of here, I got water. That's a weird one. Are you serious? That's what he said. I feel like you're looking at me trying to get a reaction. No, I swear. Uh, You'll have it on camera. Ow! No, just kidding. Let's start with two. Okay, so it's toss, toss, catch, catch, okay? Toss, toss, catch, catch. Oh. oh. Okay. Hang on, let's start with one. Let's start with one. You gotta get used to the hand to hand thing, right? Oh, that was. It's a good thing we just have hit the floor a bunch. Let's, oh, no. UV There's gotta be a sure. better way to do this. I like, that all I just saying, this is a bad idea all around. What's your name? I can't smoke. There's a concert, and it pay. That's what I don't understand. There's no. Stuff. Yeah, I told you three times. What? It's through the gates. Is there other stuff through the gates that's not this? It's just like stages and chairs. Okay. All on the fast till the afternoon thing. Uh, what's that? Are you guys on the fasting till no, the afternoon no, thing too? No. Boarding in live from 420. Yeah, vaporizing. Uh, shit. Not shit has happened. It's another normal day. Everybody's kind of weird. There's a lot of vaporizer products. It seems like marijuana is moving towards tech in this quarter. Or we're just being approached by. Because of what you look. Yeah. Does you look like a vape god? Yeah. Where'd you get your uh, MD? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Almost there. Yep. Oh, we're used to it. The traffic out oh, here. Oh, I hate Believe the traffic. Oh, the boat. Oh, made a boat, man. Look at him. Oh, that fucking goatee. So our first 420 event was very uneventful. I don't know, it's gonna rain. It was kind of just like a festival fair, but there's music guests later, but we're not really like trying to do all that. So right now we're gonna go and eat. Maybe hit another event later, we'll see. I don't really know. I'm not really into 420 festivities. <laughs> we tried. I tried. I tried to participate. We tried. Shit, I'm about to put this on. Is that your shirt? Yeah, this is what. Cause this is too loud. Mm. Especially with the oh, goatee. Oh, that fucking pale pink with that goatee. What are you gonna do? Can you get down? I can't even go up to Teddy's. Why would they do this on purpose? Well, I took the keys from Teddy's to go out on the pool and take pictures, and then I locked the keys out on the pool. It's all right. The summer time is like my favorite because people just come down just soaking wet. And <laughs> Alright. Thank you. Eleven? No. Then I locked us out of the pool. 
I couldn't come up to you to get the other keys because I don't have keys, so I had to go get the guy at the front desk to bring, come with me to the pool to go get your keys. And Brandy filmed the whole thing. Thank you for filming it. So, um, yesterday uh, was 4:20. Well, as I'm recording this, yesterday was 4:20, and you know everybody knows I smoke weed. I love weed. I'm all about weed. Um, but 420, and I was invited to some cool stuff, like people reached out, I got free tickets to places, um, photo passes to multiple events, like coming through, coming through, coming through, come document, um, and I really wanted to. Like I really had all intentions of going out and just kind of like being in the mix, which we did for a minute, but this all kind of leads into one place. So basically, 420 all about weed and weed culture. And this whole talk will like kind of revolve around culture and it'll make sense in a minute. But this is what I want to talk about. 420 basically revolves around weed culture, which there's any kind of subculture. There's uh, eccentric types and just kind of craziness. And a lot of stuff that is very normal to me is celebrated in my opinion, in my perspective, a very silly way. Like it's just silly. A lot of it is like people trying to sell me new products. You know, it's it's a big business here. 420 is like, 420 is just like crazy. So, and during that, like during yesterday, there was an article released on Complex that was written by Angel Diaz about the gentrification of sneakers. Um, I wanna make sure I get that title right, actually. The title of the blog is uh, The Gentrification of Sneakers and How It's Ruining the Culture, which I, uh, I don't, you know, I, me and Angel got into it yesterday on Twitter and it's whatever, like, honestly, we didn't get into it over the fact that, the, you know, the fact that he has his opinion. We got over into it over because he's disrespectful to the amount of work that I've done, it's respectful to people who are fans of me, that's kind of where the disconnect came from, and not understanding a joke, because the problem is here, published under the housing of Complex, which is owned by Verizon, which we talked about last week. Like, I'm not trying to go on this witch hunt against Complex right now, but at the same time, this all sort of plays in together because I talked shit last week, I jokingly said when they were hiring for a new position, like as a joke, I, we talked about this, I jokingly said it. No one at the office really understands what the fuck is going on with me, I guess, and doesn't understand what a joke is, because now Angel claps back at me acting like I was asking for a job when I started criticizing the article. A, I would never ask Complex for a job. B, even if I did ask you for a job or work there, I will criticize the shit out of your article, but you're making a very large statement. One, you're throwing gentrification, which is just a very serious topic of discussion, onto shoes. You used a picture of three white kids on the very front of the cover. You're trying to paint this picture. You're trying to kind of, you're trying to place a little racism spark into the middle of this. And the article itself gives Angel's perspective growing up, his idea of what sneakers are, and that's fine. Like, if you clean your shoes, if you prefer your shoes to look crispy, like whatever, you're from New York, you did this, that, and the third in the 80s and the 90s, like that's all great, that's all fantastic, but that is your story. It has nothing to do with where we are now. Uh, we all have stories like that. We all have stories from the 90s and the 80s and you know, who were alive about the way things were different. Like, everything was different. The movies were different. Soda machines were fucking different. Like, everything has changed. And the culture of change comes from technology. Like, technology has changed all of this shit. I really am, like, completely lost. And I tweeted the other day that sneaker culture doesn't exist. And I tweeted that because it's basically true. You have to understand culture first before you can really even talk about this. And I don't feel like a lot of people in the sneaker world really understand cultures and what they're made of of how they exist, why they exist. Culture is human made, you know? We make culture, like we, you're born into this. You don't decide, you know, like you're not just born into it and deciding which culture you're a part of. You're born into it, it's forced onto you no matter what, but it, even though they're all different, it's all forced. It's all learned. You don't, you don't just come out of the fucking womb ready to fucking go. All this is just kind of passed down. All this is an idea. If we're talking about a race of people or a country or something like that, that's a completely different list of, I would say, rules and regulations and importance of preserving. There, it's a whole different thing. You're talking about wiping off an entire species or you're talking about wiping off an entire 
uh, effort of an entire people, that's a completely different situation. To compare you not being able to cop your shoes to people being displaced from their neighborhoods is ridiculous. To compare people buying shoes to extracting diamonds from Rwanda is even more ridiculous. I don't know if the article is trying to paint the picture, such as some articles have been painted that certain people are a guest in hip hop. Uh, we all know that hip hop and skateboarding are probably two of the biggest influencers of street fashion. We do understand that culture. So I mean, as an outsider, let's say you've never bought shoes other than what your parents have bought you. When you enter the shoe world, there is a culture to that. But the real only thing that we share is people who collect shoes and a blanket statement is that we like shoes. That's it, we all like shoes. That's really the only, it's really the only binding thing that creates this culture as far as a sneakerhead goes. There's no, or whatever you wanna call it, I don't even consider myself a sneakerhead. You know, a lot of people wanna act like this is a collective, it's not, so there is, there is that. But then there's subcultures of that. And again, I think sneakers is a subculture. Maybe mainstream right now, but it's still very much a subculture of the United States, largely, of other countries. There's some countries where sneaker culture is completely non-existent. So I, I, that's another argument, but we'll, we'll refer to it as a culture for this argument. But once you get into the sneaker world, you'll find out that that culture is broken into hundreds of subcultures and microcultures. There's the resale culture. There's the hype beast culture. There's the I wear my shit culture. There's the I'm from the 80s culture. There's the I'm a OG culture. Fucking cultures everywhere. And everyone has a different existence on where where they came from. Someone from New York, completely different path of them their whole life collecting or buying sneakers. Someone from North Carolina has a completely different path collecting and buying sneakers, neither of which are right. It is about individuality. And when you get down into cultures, especially like American culture, we're not in a huge hierarchy like that. A lot of people try to create these hierarchies. They're, they're just different stories that got you to the same place. And I know a lot of people from New York who had kids come to summer to stay with their uncle I made fun of because they don't actually live in New York. But that, that, all that shit's irrelevant. Like all that, all of that silly stuff is complete jargon. And that's, that's where we're getting mixed up. Like there is no collective. Like I don't, I didn't come up the same way as the next guy. I didn't come up the same way as Angel. I didn't come up the same way as Matt Welty. None of us came from the same place. But we all took pieces of different different cultures all over. You travel, you, you go to the next place, you talk to someone, the internet is invented. There's so many reasons why culture is now completely changed. We have melting pots of culture and we all enjoy it. We all go to different types of food. We all go to different kinds of events, see different kinds of movies. This new separation in lines and trying to separate what belongs to who in all realms, it's complete bullshit. I don't think things should be misappropriated, but that, that's another conversation altogether. As far as buying shoes, nobody, nobody is entitled to get first. You're not entitled to the shoe because you bought it in the 80s. Your story of, I bought this 30 years ago, is no more important than the person who's never had a chance to buy them, never heard of them before. You seeing Michael Jordan play is no more important than someone that really loves Michael Jordan now. They're not killing the culture. You just don't like that it's harder for you to get what you want. Which brings me to a completely different conversation about culture altogether. Like, where is the individuality? We're gonna talk about sneakerheads and hype beasts and all that shit. This is a herd mentality. So this year is a great example of this. I, last year, started the channel, all about boost. You guys know the story. I haven't swayed from that. I haven't swayed whatsoever. I've stayed myself. I, I make videos how I wanna make them. I don't chase after hype things to get views or any of these things. I just making a vlog based on whatever I want. If I want to start collecting fucking Legos tomorrow, I'll collect Legos tomorrow. I'm not in any way like trying to do anything other than what I want to do. The only thing I do that I don't want to do, sometimes I buy shoes just to check them out, but I don't hype them up for no reason. If I don't like them, I don't like them. If I like them, I'm like, hey, this is a sleeper. That's just what it is. Uh, I just try to keep it with my opinion and what I feel and project that. I also get called all kinds of names for not liking another brand and for not collecting the other brand. There's this weird kind of, I'm just gonna go ahead and say retardation in the entire environment. One hand in the culture, you stand out and you get ostracized and you get made fun of and you get shit talked to you if you don't do what everyone else is doing. But on the other hand, 
people are complaining because everyone's doing the same thing. Everyone's going after the same shoe and half of these people don't even want to wear it like me because I actually want to wear it. I Okay, like I get that you want to wear. First off, I think if you're buying shoes for 30, 40 years, 20 years, 10 years, five years, then you should have some plugs. When the fucking Pirate Black Yeezy dropped, I had zero plugs. I could not get the Pirate Black Yeezys. I paid resale for them. Now I can get any shoe I want. That didn't just happen because of anything other than my own personality, my own hard work, and my own networking. I'm not saying that's typical. I'm not saying everyone could probably get to that. Well, actually, I do think that's typical. I think if you work hard, you could get wherever you want. But I know that not everyone is in that situation now not everyone wants to buy as many shoes as I want every month the difference here like that's YouTube culture and you're not and people aren't separating the two. YouTube culture and sneaker culture they really don't have too much to do with each other they're almost countercultures of each other in the way that they're placed but they've started to merge because people are just doing what is popular people wear what's popular make videos about what's popular and they're not doing what they actually want to do which is creating what a culture of followers like is that part of our culture so this is my problem with the whole hype beast thing and people complaining about it is yes you want the shoe I get it like you want that shoe too and you're mad because there's a lot of people that want it why are you entitled to want it before then why is it that certain people feel as if they're more entitled to purchase something than the next and then on the back side of that people say oh well they should just make more product when people make more product no one buys it. So now we're talking about the fucking psychology of the human beings that live in the culture. And really what culture is is fucking people being fucking neurotic. Everyone co-signing them being neurotic. It's like as long as we can agree on which neurotic thing, then it's all good. And that's part of our culture too. I mean, this happened with skateboarding. You know, skateboarding blew up. I used to skate I skateboarded every single day during high school, literally every single day, all day long. It was my entire life. If you'd asked me 20 years ago what I was going to be when I grow up, pro skateboarder. When skateboarding blew up all huge and crazy and it got super corporate, as it is now, I didn't quit skateboarding. I just kept skating. I went with my friends and I skated. And the culture of sneakers and the culture of all these things are to wear your shoes and do what you do. Fucking chef or, well, you can't wear your shoes in the fucking kitchen. But if, you know, whatever, whatever you're doing, like, and if you are a chef, your day, your off days, your personal expression through what you wear, that's what it's about. And if your personal expression is just like, I need to fit in with what everybody else is doing, then, I mean, really, what kind of expression is that? You know, like, really, what are you expressing other than you got them too? Which I get, like, there's a big part of society and culture that gets us to want to fit in. I think that, and it's fine if you do fit in, if you truly like something, that's totally cool. Absolutely. There's also a huge amount of people who are just feeling entitled, not wanting anyone else to know about it. And it just reminds me of like, all that shit is so stupid and irrelevant. You know, the, and the brands, when they make more product, people don't buy it. If it's not exclusive, people don't want it. There's a psychology behind it. And for people who are consumers only to say like, you should make more, you should make more. Those aren't the people that take the financial hits when it all doesn't sell. The sneaker world has proved it's a fickle market because they made more boost, they made more, they made more Jordans, they made more of everything, and now what do people do? They call it dead. The only reason that someone calls a shoe dead is because they literally have no identity. You are looking for, or they're a reseller. There's your only two reasons. Either you're looking for something to complete you that makes it so cool. Like what happened? Like what, you walk in somewhere and no one says anything about your NMDs or there's no jealousy or envy over what you have. So that makes it dead. That's insecurity. That's not okay. That's, that, I mean, I guess it's okay, but it's probably, it's pretty annoying to hear people talk about. My main argument with this culture thing is that one, there should be more individuality. And once you go off on of that trail of individuality, the only thing you should really be telling people to do or urging them to do is to be an individual themselves. You can give them the information that you have and you can guide it all. In no way, once you become an individual, should everyone else follow you. You are not the culture. You are not bigger than the culture. You're just a little piece of it. You're a little part of it. We're all little pieces and part of it. We all take little pieces and parts. That's what creates this melting pot. But let's not get it twisted. Like, just because we all buy shoes, like, we're not the same. We're not all the same. We all come from different places. We all go to different places. It may be one thing that binds us, but to think that this is a whole stratosphere of collective thoughts and, collect and a collective vision, 
is fucking stupid. Really, if you evaluate it even further, what you're really talking about in sneaker culture is capitalism. We live in a capitalistic society. That's not sneaker culture. That's not even gentrification. That's anyone that needs money. If you want to talk about gentrification and you want to talk about all of the rich kids that buy shoes, kids are buying shoes. So, and a lot of times rich kids are paying resale. You know, to me, sneakers is not a culture. It's a game. Sneakers has always been a game. It's the sneaker game. And if you don't like the fucking game, stop playing it. When I got out of shoes, that's why I got out of shoes. The game was fucked up. Every shoe release was stupid. The internet was just now starting to have releases. They didn't even drop Supreme online back then. You'd have to go to New York. We would go to New York to get shoes. So everything got really goofy and really stupid and I didn't like it anymore and I got out of the game. You don't have to play. You can sit out of the game. You don't have to do this shit. You buy one shoe a month. You know what I'm saying? But we love this shit. We love this game and new things that are here. You know, we used to have the thrill of the hunt to go find the shoes. Well, now there's the thrill of fucking copying, you know? And now there's the thrill of making network connections. Plenty of thrills to be had, but there's also plenty of shoes to be had. There's also an ever -changing changing environment. We are fucking goddamn vultures. Something comes out and we rip it apart as quickly as possible. We just tear through shit. J. Cole puts out an album, people rip it apart in minutes. I haven't heard it, don't even ask. I'm just saying like people in minutes last trash. There are people in this world putting effort towards things and trying to make things and bring their creative visions to life. That's a creative culture. We can do this all day. My main point in this is that the culture of sneakers for so long has been Jordan this, Jordan that, Nike this, Nike that. That changed last year. Adidas is now at least considered um, a, in competition with Nike. So that's changed the culture of shoes altogether. And look at SneakerCon, you know, it changed the culture. We can argue that Kanye has changed the culture of sneakers completely. And Nike not fucking with Kanye the way he wanted to changed the culture. All of those things changed the culture, the tech, everything. Holding on to your story of how you got where you are and your personal like voyage, that's great and that's awesome. And I urge you to share your story with as many people as possible but the moment that you start trying to tell people that they're not as good as you not as deserving as you you are more of an OG you wear your shoes better I don't know what the fuck that means all these very like surface just ego things you can fuck off like straight up and, and that's in anything like that's in any society like it's you're not bigger than it I urge you just to have a fucking like have your own sense of taste like you don't have to follow anybody and the proof of this fact is that every fucking day you know they give they give shoes and product to famous people, to rappers and things like this. And this is where we used to get, this is where sneaker culture came from in the first place. We used to see rappers wear shit and we'd cop. Now it's manufactured. You know, before people were just buying Adidas, buying Jordans. Now this is manufactured. Adidas, Nike, everybody gives people product so that you can get your little piece of them. Your favorite rapper, you can get a little piece. You're just like them, whatever, whatever. And those two cultures mix and match. Athletes wanted to be rappers. Rappers wanted to be athletes. Everybody was doing everything. Skateboarding making art like and you know when you and in the 90s with skateboarding and hip-hop honestly there around me there wasn't a lot of race talk we just fucking did what we did everybody knew we had this thing that bound us and that's what we did our, a lot of what we consider culture is programming a lot of it is what we've done forever and ever and ever it takes uh, individual it takes you to think like an individual and you still can fit in you don't have to play along you don't have to have the same story you didn't have to find out about shoes in the 80s to appreciate it you can find out about shoes tomorrow and still be an OG people get very confused they also feel very entitled when they have money you know it's like oh I have money to buy these shoes I deserve the shoe well no you don't, you know, like different than art and when things are crafted and when art is crafted and there's one painting, it doesn't matter. There's a bunch of people who have enough money to buy the painting. If the demand outweighs the supply, it's just a problem. It's part of the game. You don't like who is demanding it, that there's really nothing you can do about that. And if you work at fucking complex, one of the biggest contributors to this issue, you guys made a fucking Supreme resale video that in my opinion, probably is the reason that 50% of people resell now. I would pretty much bet, I would bet a lot on that. I bet that 50% of people got the idea to resell from a complex video. You guys are constantly talking about resale value, constantly trashing shoes. Um, there's plenty of shit that you guys do that is detrimental to the culture and then you turn around and have one of your writers write something about the culture about how certain people don't belong then attack me and say that all of the people who fuck with me are basically stupid which is and call me out of touch which could not be further from the truth with an open statement to complex I'm more in touch 
than most. You are very out of, when that's what happens, I say it all the time, big ships move slow. Y'all don't really know what's going on. You have to manufacture your content and there's a Verizon blanket there. So I really just, I don't want to hate on you guys and I don't want to say that anybody's wrong because there's no one's right and no one's wrong. But I, but I do think what is wrong is telling people that they're a part of something that's ruining it when you really have done nothing to help it either. So I think, I think that's super hypocritical and super ridiculous. That, you know, that whole go play outside mentality, like that shit doesn't work, you know? There's no hierarchy here. If you can cop the shoe, you can cop the shoe and that's what it is. I don't care how old, how young, how cringe, how whatever. Everyone's still figuring out their paths. Nobody's entitled to shit. The only thing you're entitled to are the things that you create. You create something, by all means, feel entitled to it. Other than that, I really, I, I don't see it. I I think the shoe game is awesome right now. I think that there's a lot of change going on. I think people are having a lot of trouble identifying with certain things and they're figuring out who they are in the realm of the sneaker world, which really doesn't matter. Like, honestly, you know, it's like a lot of people are trying to parlay it into something else, which I get, you know, obviously shoes have completely changed my life. I don't think that has much to do with the actual shoe game. I think YouTube versus shoe, the shoe game are separate. They do have some intersecting lines, but uh, what you see on YouTube is not typical to the regular shoe buyer. There's just been a lot of hate and there's a lot of shit talk and people who are on the fence with retiring on the shoe game because they're tired and maybe they're not that cool and maybe they don't have any connections and you know, maybe they're a douchebag and nobody wants to fucking hook them up. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? If you're on your way out and retiring, there's no one to blame. With cultures in general, when you, you know, if you go to another country, you have three choices with the culture. You can confront it, you can complain about it, or you can conform to it. Sneakers and fashion, most people just conform, 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 which makes the fucking herd feel better because everybody likes it, but then they complain because the herd's too big. And then you're just in this very, very strange place where there's nowhere to go and there's no room for individuality. The collective just moves and moves and moves, and when someone strays, the whole collective says something to them so they want to come back in line. I urge you to be this person on the outside of the collective who's thinking for themselves, and if those lines overlap, great. If they don't, great. It doesn't fucking matter. It's not disrespectful. We're not like, we're visiting Japan and calling people by slang names. We're not visiting India wearing our shoes through somebody's house. We're not doing things that are culturally disrespectful by choosing which shoe you want. Reselling is also now just a part of the culture. Reselling is just a subculture of our culture. You cannot have the shoe game without the resale culture. It just exists. Probably never gonna go away fully, but that has also changed. All these things are ever evolving. I don't think you should complain because that doesn't really do shit for you. It just ostracizes you. I don't think you should conform because you are now lost. You're no longer an individual. But I do think that you should contest and I do confront. I think that you should look at things on a case by case basis and decide how you feel. And that's not just like, it's not shoes, it's politics, religion, diet, health, what, whatever, what have you. Look at every situation as an individual situation. Look at every day as an individual situation. Look at every creation as an individual creation. You know, these shoes get made and it's very easy for us to scroll by and be like, trash. Someone spent months on that. You know, like an album, I heard it, oh, that's just trash. Someone spent months on that. I'm not opposed to critiquing and I'm in no way saying everyone should get a trophy. I talk shit about a lot of things, but that's confronting it. Confront all you want, but just make sure you're being yourself and just, and make sure that none of these dumbass articles that tell you that you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that and you shouldn't like your own Instagram post. It's all bullshit. It's all complete bullshit and you don't have to listen to it. People are just mad they can't cop them damn shoes. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and the best way to represent this individuality is Nike's story, you know? And that's like really where people have forgotten where they came from or forgotten where Nike came from or maybe corporations have grown so much that the, the homegrown story is just washed over. But you know, Nike and the Jordan and the reason that a lot of people like it is because it was so individual and it was so alt. It was so completely over here, it broke rules. It was banned from the NBA. You had leather shoes before Nike. You had leather basketball shoes before Nike. In fact, that would be Adidas that put the Nike and Jordan and the marketing completely changed the culture of basketball shoes and shoes in general. How can anyone be upset when now, 20, 30 years later, everything surrounding that culture has completely shifted and changed. Especially since when that happened, we were watching TVs that were the size of our laptops, and now our fucking phones have more power than any electronic we ever had in our home, ever, while Jordan was playing. 
ever. There just needs to be a realization. The world is changing around you constantly. There's a lot of fucking talk. There's a lot of people hyping things up for different reasons. A lot of hype comes from just feeling like you want to be better than people. Like it's really just ego. It's a lot of ego. It's just ingrained in you. It's like how you're brought up. You were brought up in the 80s and 90s. You're fucking programmed to like Jordan. If you were brought up in the 80s and 90s, Chicago, it's part of who you are. That is definitely part of your culture upbringing. But me, born in North Carolina, I don't have any parts of my, like I don't adopt to any part of that culture. Like I'm not racist, I'm not a bigot. I, the only thing I adopt from in the North Carolina Southern culture is that I like food. I like to eat. That, that's it, like I don't adopt, the rest of it's whatever. You know, I don't feel very prideful of where I'm from. I don't feel very prideful of uh, locations or where I happened to be shot out of the fucking meteor's sky and born and popped out of my mom. Like, I had no control over any of that stuff. I don't take a lot of pride in that. I take pride in where I am now and I take pride in like all of the things and pieces and parts that I've been able to pick up my whole life, which has made me uniquely me. That's what I think that sneaker culture is missing, and that's what I think that people in general are missing. And I think that most people need to hear that you do not need to be afraid to do whatever you want. You can wear whatever you want, you can say whatever you want to an extent, someone might knock your fucking teeth out, but you know, obviously, there's also a, a level of morality in there. That's the big disconnect in sneaker culture too, is we all don't have the same moral code, and there's really no way for anyone tried to define what sneaker culture is. It's really just a bunch of subcultures of subcultures of subcultures that make up one subculture. And in regards to this conversation about culture, people gassing shoes up and people just kinda uh, going with whatever's cool this week. You know, I saw this happen with all of the Virgil Nike stuff. A lot of people ran over to Nike. And I really don't care. A lot of people just mentioned to me, like, oh, you're not getting, I can't believe it. Like, your channel would grow so much more if you did this. Like, you could do that. Yes, I agree. I understand. You know, if I wanted my channel to have a million subs, I would buy everything that came out and I would pretend to like it and I would just do that. You know, if I wanted that, I would do that. But I don't want that. I want the people here to be invested and to actually, uh, want to be here. I don't know where the boost blade is right now. I use this scissor. But this pair of shoes is a great example to me of people being drunk on newness, being very high on uh, being part of the crowd, you know, it's like the shoe was pretty available. A lot, of some, a lot of people missed out on it, but a lot of people got it. And at this point in shoe culture, if you get the shoe, then you feel better than everybody else. And that's one thing I've learned by getting all these shoes and being connected is that these shoes, I love this. I love this that we've built and I love that I can get these shoes, I can buy them, I can talk about them, and I get to experience them, which is like the coolest fucking thing in the world. It's super cool. I also work really fucking hard, but it's also super fucking cool. But this to me, like, is another Another proof and I haven't put these on yet so I'll, I won't know but I've had people hit me up this week and tell me that this shoe feels just as comfortable as Boost. It's just more comfortable even. I've had some people say that they're, they're better than Boost. I've had Nike diehard Nike dudes in my DMs who have talked shit to me for years on videos sending me DMs of this shoe and being like yo dude this shit's fire and it's just a cycle like every fucking time a shoe gets leaked People talk shit about it. No, 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 no. Then the shoe comes out, then there's this level of acceptance. And then there's this sort of build to hype it back up for one, the group can feel like they're all cool. So the group doesn't feel stupid. You don't want a whole stupid group. And so resale can rise. Don't think that this culture didn't exist before the internet either. People are getting fucking murdered over their shoes. You know, people have definitely, there's always been a level to hype and what people can afford. There's always a dividing line in power and poverty and there's always violence on that line. That, that hasn't changed either. But this shoe right here, it's made of Adiprene, that everyone is fucking going crazy over this week. It's definitely not like Boost. I, I know what Adiprene feels like. It's definitely squishier than a midsole, but let's not get carried away. It has ortholite in it, that's nice. It's definitely a nicely made shoe. I'll agree, nicely made. Um, but yeah, I'll give these a shot and we'll see, and then I can pretty much guarantee you right now that this shoe will probably go up for sale because I highly doubt that I'm actually gonna wear it. When's the last time that people just did something for somebody else? You know, if we're, if, if sneakers are a culture, we're a fucking shitty power 
separation, arguing, fighting, not helping each. I mean, when's the last time anybody here uh, gave somebody a retail oop? You know, when's the last time someone just hooked somebody up? You know, when did that happen? I just, I urge people to think about like what they're saying and how much of it is just a level of entitlement and how much of it is you just need to change up. You know, it's a game. So if you can't, if you really, really want a shoe, and you really, really want to get it, I gotta do whatever you gotta do to make that happen. If you really want to get it for retail, you gotta put it in the motherfucking work. It's not easy. It's a game. It's not easy. I'm gonna try these on, or the camera, so that we actually get my real response. <laughs> Good God. I mean, it's definitely not boost. I don't know why anybody would even say that. It's higher off the ground, but it's got like another layer to it. Like it's so bulky, it's really bulky. Definitely not a dad, I don't really see dad shoe in it, but it's super bulky. What I want to do is put a BYW on. I mean, it's definitely not uncomfortable. The shoe is not uncomfortable. That I'm not going to say. It's definitely not uncomfortable. <sighs> Yeah, there's it's so loose all day. Get the fuck out of here. Crazy. Yeah, my right leg already hurts. It's definitely not boost. Most definitely not. 